After years of being dead, the crow is resurrected once more on the big screen. But it's doing its own thing. And who better to lead the charge than the same director that gave us the live-action Ghost in the Shell and Snow White and the Huntsman? Needless to say, The Crow 2024 sucks! And I'm gonna spoil the crap out of it, right now. I put out a review for this new film just a couple days ago, so if you want to check that out, feel free to subscribe if you like this commentary. It's very highbrow, very intellectual stuff here. You can even take it a step further, pop that notification bell, short for notification bell, so these videos show up right in your feed in the future. As with all these spoiler videos, I tried to go through the movie in the order that things happen. I'm gonna miss stuff, I might have some of the timelines screwed up, but at the end of the day I'm doing my best and that's really all that matters here. It's all about me. <laughs> Let's start. We open at a farm, I think. The visuals are very muddy and very close up, so you don't really get a good idea of what's happening around this kid. We see a young Eric crying, tears in his eyes as he goes up to a horse, assuming a horse that he knows, a horse of course. The white horse on his side. <laughs> Help me, Eric. Little boy Eric tries to pull the barbed wire off of its chest. <laughs> Can't do <laughs> and Eric will receive a scarring on his hands from that barbed wire. But the real scarring takes place internally. It's powerful stuff for someone, I think, I don't know. Eric cries a little bit more and then we have the crow title come up. <laughs> Emo, angsty. It should be noted that the gothic themes, the color palette, everything that made the original unique completely gone from this one. I'm not doing a comparison video here. This is gonna be solely focused on the 2024 one. Some people foolishly thought that I have a hard on for the original The Crow. I saw that movie one time, I was pretty young. Don't remember it very well. I thought it was kind of cool back in the day. I never really thought about it again. Didn't see the shitty sequels that were like straight to DVD with different actor, obviously with a different actor, Brandon Lee died filming The Crow. But no, I didn't go into this movie with a chip on my shoulder for that reason. I go to most of these remakes, reboots with a chip on my shoulder already because they're almost always entirely soulless cash grabs. That doesn't mean they can't win me over. Jake Gyllenhaal's Roadhouse I thought was a perfectly fine action movie. Is it better than the Swayze one? No. It doesn't really have anything iconic about it either. It's just a different time. And it was only really a Roadhouse movie in name only. It could have been called something completely different and it probably would have gone down even better with people. As it stands though, some of these remakes are fine when they try to do their own thing and they're not insulting to the originals. The Crow 2024, to be fair, does exactly that. It's its own movie, tells its own story in a way, and it was all done very, very badly. After a very bizarre intro, like, I don't really know what I was supposed to get out of that. Okay, this, this kid saw a dead horse and it, it made him sad. How does that really play into the bigger narrative here? Well, I mean, I guess it's, you can't always save the ones you love, assuming that he loved this horse. But this whole storyline is about how he actually can save the one that he loves. Oh, but he can't be with her at the end, so maybe that's what it is. You can't be with the one you love forever. Beautiful, powerful messaging. It's too bad the love story in this movie is completely ridiculous, and let's dive into that now. We cut to Shelly, who's gonna be the love interest in this movie, played by FKA Twigs, formerly known as Twigs. Fuck a Twigs, I don't really know her. I, she does music, she doesn't act. That much is clear, because she's awful in this role. She doesn't shut her fucking mouth. Like, it's always open, uh, it's always like this and I can't focus on anything else. I hate the mouth breathing thing. There's a few act, the actor that played Percy Jackson in the original movie, he was a mouth breather in every movie he was in. Kristen Stewart is a mouth breather. These, these people need to just close it a little bit. Just like this. When you're not talking, zip it. Shelly's in some shit. Her friend messages her, says, hey, Shell, uh, Shell Bell, we have a problem. The video that was sent to us is of a bad guy at a party we were at. He has a knife on a piano. Shelly actually killed someone with that knife after he whispered sweet nothings into her ear. Uh, it, it's, it's not a good situation. We're not going to even see this video until the final, you know, act of the movie. Not that it really matters. Because the plot is very basic, it boils down to this. Evil boss man Vincent 
high-powered, wealthy, individual tycoon guy wants these people dead that were in the video and any trace of the video destroyed as well. Fortunately for Vincent, he has superpowers. He, he, he made a deal with the devil and so he can whisper things into people which controls them. I feel like he's using this power in the worst ways possible. Like there's so many better uses of this thing, dude. And it also seems very inconsistent how he uses it. Sometimes he whispers to people, they kill themselves. He takes their blood as a sacrifice. Other times he doesn't do that, but he does the whispering. I'm not sure what's going on with his powers. I also don't care that much. Shelly's friend is gonna be killed in a pretty brutal way. Vincent's gonna find her, he's gonna whisper to her, she's gonna take a knife and she's gonna kill herself with it. This film likes to do the thing that John Wick 3 did a lot where they show the knife go into the eyeball or do gross things that normally the camera would cut away with, but because of modern tech, we can show the animated blade go into the eye. Pretty sweet, pretty cool stuff. Shelly gets checked into rehab where she's gonna lay low, but it doesn't take long for Vincent's goons to track her down. While she's there though, she finds some solace from her drug use and she also finds love. Because Crowboy himself is also checked in there, Eric. He is a shell of a man. He's getting picked on, he's got no life to him. And that's really not gonna change throughout the movie. Although he will fall in love with Twigs, Shelly, and he will smile a little bit more and talk a little bit more, but otherwise he's still a sad sack of shit. They play some trust exercises, one of which is a big circle jerk where everybody gets in a circle and they step forward every time they've been wronged or they've lied or been lied to. Um, this is just wasting my fucking time. We have an almost two hour crow movie here and it's gonna take a good hour plus before he even gets to become the crow. I understand you have to build up a romance. Why would they have them meet now? Why would they have them meet at this point in their life and only fall in love for a few weeks or days? I'm not even sure how long it's been, but they kind of start flirting as they're in this facility but then Vincent's goons come after him and they both run away together. They run out into the road in the middle of the night and they stop in front of a truck who gives them a ride in the back because as we all know, if you're driving down the road in the dead of night and two crazy looking people run out of the woods in front of your truck and say, give us a ride, you're obviously gonna let them hop in. Like it's dumb and dumber. Pick them up! Shelly informs Eric that she has a place they can hide out at. It's gonna be one of her mom's many chateaus, one of her many mansions that she owns. We're gonna learn that Sophia later on traded her daughter's happiness away, her life away, so that Sophia could rise in power, I, I think. Something, it's all kind of vague, it's all kind of loose but there's some bad parenting happening here. This is really the chunk of time in the film where Shelly and Eric are gonna have their romance. They're gonna bang it out, they're gonna do drugs together, they're gonna bang it out some more, they're gonna drug it up together, they're gonna go frolic in the countryside with some loser friends, really keeping a low profile, going to clubs with friends, really keeping a low profile, wearing comically large fur coats out in public, really keeping a low profile. It was about this point in the film where I realized I hate both of these people. I can't stand them. They're burnout losers who don't bring anything to society. They're just kind of there. Eric has a tattoo for every day of the year. They're question marks, they're diamonds, they're tiaras, they're ha ha ha, they're damaged, they're joker on the stomach. It's just a mess. Just an ugly set of tattoos all around this guy. Vincent's right-hand woman, Marion, informs him that they have tracked down the location of these two lovebirds. Crows. Lovebirds. You got it. At some club warehouse place, so they go there to take him out. Every time Marion came on camera, I kept asking myself, was uh, Tilda Swinton busy during filming? She couldn't be in this film? Just had a very Tilda Swinton look to her. Just an aside to throw out there. Let's keep going. This is the pivotal moment where the henchmen pull Eric and Twigs to the ground and they throw bags over them and they're like <laughs> and they can't breathe. They're gonna suffocate even though their hands are free. Shelly at one point is like, no! And she's holding the guy's arms, no! Instead of just going, no! 
making a hole in the bag so she can breathe. Look, it's, it's a silly little thing, but it's one of those observations where it just kind of drives me up a wall. At least just tie their hands behind their back and then put the bags on so I can get fully ensconced in the horror show that's playing out instead of thinking, Eric, poke a hole in the bag, you dumbass. It's the little things that drive me up a wall. After they're killed, they go where everyone goes when they die, the ocean. So they're underwater. And Eric is reaching for a twig, but she's like, sorry, no olive branch this time, bro. Gotta crow. Eric's like, no, no. That was a bit much emotion. Let me see if I can do it more like Bill Skarsgård in this. No, no, no. Shelly is in fact dead, but don't worry. She's going straight to hell. Vincent's deal with the devil is anyone he kills goes down to hell as an offering for Satan. But Vincent didn't actually kill Shelly. He didn't do the blood sacrifice. I guess he just has to issue orders of who's gonna die and that's good enough for Satan. Like Vincent doesn't have to get his hands dirty or something. I don't really get it. It's all very, it's all very convoluted. But Shelly's gonna be in hell getting tortured for an eternity unless Eric can do something about it. Fortunately, Eric's got unfinished business, so he's going to the limbo world. Uh, I'm calling Croatia, because they didn't give it a name. He's gonna meet another friendly, vague person there that's gonna be like, ah, oh, yes, you're here. Good, good, I've been, I, I, I've been expecting you. You're not, uh, you're not done on Earth, so I'm gonna push you into the water. You're going to come back to life, and you're going to die all over again because I didn't give you any abilities. You're just going back for another shot at the gold. Eric gets snapped back to reality. Whoa, there goes. And now he's on a mission, a mission of revenge. So he's going to follow crows to his destinations. I think the crows are showing him where to go. He just kind of happens upon the first guy who's chilling out to some ridiculous music with the windows down in his car. That's another quick aside. The music in this movie is atrocious. You go from the somewhat generic theme song they came up with to just random old poppy hits. Nothing feels aligned with what I'm watching unfold on camera. Eric gets in a little tiff with the guy at the vehicle. The dude in the car's like, hey, I killed you. And Eric's like, yeah, people keep asking if I'm back. Well, I'm thinking I'm back. So that was way too much emotion for this movie. Sorry, he was like, people keep asking if I'm back. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm back. And then the bad guy kills himself. A little unclear as to why he kills himself, but he does. Fortunately for Eric, Vincent and Tilda Swinton are driving by in a car. So he goes after them, gets in the car. There's a little fight. He's thrown from the vehicle and completely bodied by a semi truck. <laughs> Runs him over, it's disgusting, he has to pop his leg back into place. He's kind of got like Wolverine abilities, but shittier. After some nicks and scratches take place, he heads over to his buddy's house. I don't know this guy's name, but he's got a gun in a Doritos bag. That's the point that, that sticks out for me. Like, you need a gun? All right, let me grab one from my Doritos bag over here on the speaker. Uh, that, that's what we do, us gangbangers. We just have open chip bags that we put guns in. He gives Crow money, Crow problems, the gun, and he's like, all right, I'm gonna kill these guys. But then the guys come in and blow his buddy away and kick the shit out of Eric, shooting him a bunch of times, causing him to die again. He goes back to Croatia. That guy's there once more, like, oh, I didn't think I'd see you again. How'd you screw up so fast? And Eric's like, I need to save Shelly. I need to save, you know, I'm sure I'm skipping stuff, but really nothing happens in this fucking movie. It took so long to get him to become the crow. Like, it's over an hour of just nothing going on. I, I'm, I know I'm skipping stuff. There's a scene where Vincent's talking to Sophia and he reveals like more what's on the video and he tells her to kill herself. She jumps out the window. It's so lame and generic and basic. All right, we're back to Croatia. Eric is troubled because he saw the video footage somehow, I don't remember how, of Shelly killing the person. But it wasn't really Shelly doing it. The devil made her do it. And so he knows that he loves her and, and, and they're pure of heart and they're, they're, their love is stronger than ever. And so he says, I want to take Shelly's place in hell. She can live instead of me. I don't care if I don't see her again. I love her so much. They knew each other for like a week. And the guy there's like, good, good. And so he pushes him 
and he falls backwards into the water. So he comes up and he starts putting the black stuff on his eyes. And the crow is circling around. They're like coming into him. I'm getting crow powers. He rises up. It's crowing time. I feel you crumble in my arms. Now I've got a crotana. Eric is finally in crow form. Perfect timing too, because there's an opera taking place. He's going to attend. This is where we have the one and only cool action scene in the film. He starts ripping through guys with the sword. Dudes are shooting him. I feel you crumble in my heart. He stabs the dude. And then he pushes the dude forward into another henchman. At another point, he stabs. But then he takes the gun and he starts shooting through the stab hole at the guy behind him. That shit's cool. Why didn't we get like three more of those scenes? He kills off some rich white dude. He kills off Tilda Swinton. And then we get to the big bad Vincent. He follows him back to his mansion that's empty. Come on, Vincent. Get a couple security guards there as well. And Vincent's just like, I got powers you couldn't even believe of, bro. And he bodies the crow. He and the crow fight just for a second. Vincent uses his blood magic power, gets transferred to Croatia with Eric. And I thought to myself, oh, okay, he's got crow power too now. Eric pulled the old switch of crow on him. He's going to sacrifice Vincent to the devil. And then he'll get Shelly back and they can be together. No, I mean, that is what happens. He does sacrifice Vincent. He gets pulled down below into hell. And then Shelly is returned, presumably after being tortured a whole bunch for a solid week. They embrace and then Eric goes, I can't stay with you. I'm the crow now. And she's like, bloody hell. Eh, all right. Time to do more drugs. And she leaves, and then he just walks away slowly from the camera with a crow flying by him. I feel you crumbling my heart. I don't know what I was doing with my hand. I was gonna, <laughs> he was going to put a piece of gum in his mouth. <laughs> the, the bubble pops and it makes the crow symbol. If only. And that's it. That's the crow. What a piece of shit. This was such a boring film. If you somehow got invested in the love story, I highly encourage you to check out other love story films because there was just no chemistry with these two. It was so stale across the board. The crow stuff was barely even utilized. I don't even know what the point of these birds were. Just an all around miss. But I want to hear from you. Did you see this film? Did you have a different takeaway from it? Did you think it was better than the original? Let me know in the comments, please. Again, think of subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and hopefully I'll see you next time. I also have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I bitch up a storm about silly first world problems in hopefully a funny way for you. The goal is to make you laugh and to make you cry at my misery. Hopefully I'll see you at both places. Take care. Happy and cream me me.